Pulsar at Wallaby Belgium is a high-tech water coaster. This rides the prototype Mach Power Splash, and it takes the water coaster to the next level by offering multiple launches and vertical spikes. Should this ride be cloned though? Find out in this review. Mach introduced the water coaster in 1998 with Journey to Atlantis at SeaWorld Orlando. This ride combined elements of two of the most popular amusement rides of all time, with the roller coaster and log flume. While other manufacturers have offered their own water coasters, Mach's version has been the most popular on the market, and they innovated the concept further with the Power Splash. This would be a more thrilling attraction drifting more towards the coaster side. It would feature a multi-pass launch, multiple vertical spikes, and it could even be configured to feature a vertical loop, although no park has purchased a model with this element yet. Wallaby Belgium added the first Mach Power Splash in 2016 with Pulsar. This prototype fared much better than the coaster that came before it. Vertigo was the world's first and only Doppelmayr mountain glider. This was a colossal and cool looking suspended coaster, but it had many issues from day one. The ride was supposed to open in 2006, but it was delayed to 2007 due to technical issues, and it operated so little that it was removed after the 2008 season. Wallaby Belgium desperately needed a new thrill coaster, and I'm surprised they were willing to take a chance on another prototype after the issues they had with Vertigo. But Pulsar has been a success. So much so that Mach has sold a half dozen additional power splashes ever since. Most of them are in Asia, but Six Flags Over Texas is receiving one in 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023, and Aquaman Power Wave and it is not hard to see why more have been sold. This ride is very marketable, and it takes up a small footprint. The ride is long, but it's one of the slenderest coasters out there, and it makes quite the impression too. You have the two tall spikes, plus that captivating final splash that can nail observers on the midway. Plus, this one is on the water, making it look even cooler. Although, that location caused a major issue last year. Wallaby Belgium suffered major flood damage in the summer of 2021. The park was closed for months. Pulsar's electrical room was flooded, damaging the ride's controls. Fortunately, Mach and the park got this ride operational once again for the 2022 season. Outside of that, it doesn't sound like Pulsar's had too many issues. You typically just have a minor breakdown or two throughout the day, which isn't too surprising for a prototype ride. And that's a good thing because this is one of the park's most popular rides. Pulsar often has the longest queue in the park. It routinely has a queue in excess of 45 to 60 minutes, even on cooler days. Fortunately, there are two ways to beat the line. The most efficient way is to use the single rider line. This was a walk on my lone visit to the park, even when the standby line was still posting 30 to 45 minutes. Alternatively, you can use the park's speedy pass skip the line system, but that does cost an extra fee. Pulsar is a shuttle coaster. Normally, this would mean the coaster can only run one train, but this one features a turntable load platform, allowing it to run two trains. While one train is loading, the other can be cycling the course. I believe Pulsar usually runs two trains, but Pulsar was running just one train the day I visited, like the park's other major coasters, possibly due to the bad weather forecast. Pulsar's train looks more like a boat that you'd see in a Shoot the Shoots ride. It's a single car with five rows of four, seating a max of 20 riders per cycle. The U-shaped lap bars are lowered automatically, which helps the ride of swift dispatches. And they're quite comfortable lap bars too. The contouring on the portion of the restraint that rests on your lap reminds me of those classic Intamin T-bars. I think the forces are pretty similar across the entire car, but seat selection definitely matters if you care about how wet you get. Those in the front row and edge seats will get very wet. Your shoes will come off dry, thankfully, which is what I care most about, but the splash will hit your entire upper body. Those on the interior seats are spared. Just keep in mind that if you use the single rider line, you're almost guaranteed to get placed on the edge to fill those last available seats. Once dispatched, you rotate onto the main layout. After a brief pause, you take off backwards. The LSM launch starts off slow over the bunny hill, but it actually has a bit of kick coming down the hill. You then coast up just a fraction of the 148 foot or 45 meter tall spike, 
but you'll still get some weak weightlessness. The car then moves forwards, coasting over the bunny hill. You don't get any airtime here, but the second launch engages on the other side. It has a pinch of power, and it really boosts the train's speed a noticeable amount. You then careen upwards up the second spike, going up a considerable height this time. This results in some decent weightlessness. At the bottom, the third launch engages, and this may be the most forceful launch on any mock coaster. It has a real kick to it, and since it sent you backwards, it caused me to fold over my lap bar. And with all that 63 mile per hour or 101 km per hour speed, you fly over the bunny hill. This gives everyone some nice and sustained floater airtime. I am always a fan of backwards airtime. Pulsar then rises up the back spike, and this is where its weird profiling comes into play. While it starts vertical like your usual spike, this spike sort of bends backwards at the top. So you get the usual weightlessness going up, but coming down, that hump at the top induces more traditional airtime. It's not ejector, but it is good floater airtime. While riders are experiencing that spike, Pulsar was busy filling the splashdown pool. This quick fill reservoir system from Mach is super cool. Especially if you watch it fill while you're on the spike, it looks like a mini flood is released. When the boat hits the bottom, it creates an enormous wave, which as I mentioned earlier, hits those in the front and end seats. This also serves as the ride's main braking mechanism. You then slowly roll over the bunny hill and park yourself where you started. The turntable then rotates you back to the station, ending the experience. This coaster only has 712 feet or 217 meters of track, but the swing launch sequence definitely helps this ride of a more satisfactory length. Two final things I want to touch on. First, the smoothness. Some of the mock water coasters have a rattle to them, but Pulsar is thankfully very smooth. That is certainly a good thing because this is more ambitious than their older water coasters. Second, the theming. Pulsar doesn't really have any. But the ride is stylized, and I think the logo looks really nice with the pulse in the shape of the park's W logo. So what would I rate Pulsar? I would give this prototype water coaster a 7 out of 10. This is a nice attraction. It's more forceful than I expected. The launches have some bite to them, particularly that third one when you're yanked backwards. The subsequent bunny hill has some wonderful airtime, and both spikes will have you levitating out of your seat for a few seconds. Then along with these thrilling bits, you also have that refreshing splashdown that is perfect on a hot summer day. It cools you down without destroying your footwear. I have no problem seeing more of these pop up because I think it's better than your average flume or water coaster. This offers a much more dynamic ride experience, plus the obligatory splash. So those are my thoughts on Pulsar at Wallaby Belgium. What are your thoughts on the Prototype Mach Power Splash? Or any of the newer installations? Do you like this model? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.